History Spotlight, brought to you by HEC Media and the Missouri Historical Society. Hello, I'm Dr. Jody Sowell, president of the Missouri Historical Society in St. Louis, and this is History Spotlight. Most equate President Ulysses S. Grant with the brutalities of the Civil War and the complexities of his presidency. But at home, there was a different side of it. Public historian Amanda Clark describes the love story of President and Mrs. Grant, brought to life through a treasure trove of love letters. Ulysses S. Grant was known as a pretty brutal and unrelenting leader on the battlefield. His presidential legacy tends to be a mixed one, plagued with scandals. But at home, Grant was a devoted husband and left behind a treasure trove of some of the best love letters you will ever read. Grant meets Julia Dent in St. Louis in, fittingly, February of 1844. It was a pretty classic setup. Julia's brother Fred brought his college roommate Ulysses home to meet the family. Julia was not known for her beauty, but Grant quickly fell hard for her wit and their shared love of horses. Four months later, they're crossing a swollen creek in a wagon. Julia says something about clinging to him for safety. When they're safe to the other side, Grant asks her to cling to him for the rest of her life and offers her his West Point ring. She accepts, but the engagement had to be kept secret for over a year. Their relationship had several Romeo and Juliet type aspects. She comes from wealth, he does not. His family were staunch abolitionists, while her family held over 70 people enslaved. The Mexican-American War would keep the two apart for several years before they were able to finally marry in 1848. Throughout that separation, Grant writes Julia these intense letters, these declarations of his love. You know how awkwardly I made known to you the first time of my love? It is a scene that I often think of, and with much pleasure did I hear that my offer was not entirely unacceptable. In going away now, I feel as if I have someone else than myself to live and to strive to do well for. You can have but little idea of the influence you have over me, Julia, even while so far away. If I feel tempted to do anything that I think is not right, I'm sure to think, well now, if Julia saw me, would I do this? And thus it is absent or present, I am more or less governed by what I think is your will. During the Civil War, Grant knew that he was a better general if she was somewhere nearby, and he sends for her. She leaves the children with relatives in St. Louis, she travels to the different encampments, sometimes in really dangerous situations, and over the course of the Civil War, she stays with him during campaigns at Memphis, Vicksburg, Nashville, and in Virginia. But it wasn't just when they were apart that he wrote these incredible letters. At one point, Julia wanted to have surgery on her eyes, which were crossed and a source of insecurity, and Grant writes, Dear Julia, I don't want to have your eyes fooled with. They are all right as they are. They look just as they did the very first time I ever saw them. The same eyes I looked into when I fell in love with you, and the same eyes that looked up into mine and told me that my love was returned. Next on History Spotlight, an island named for the numerous duels fought there. To learn more about the Missouri Historical Society, visit mohistory.org.